A lot of physical application problems can be thought of as questions about similar triangles. What do we mean when we talk about similar triangles? Well, imagine I have a triangle and I make an exact copy of it. We would call those two triangles congruent. They're congruent because they're the exact same size and shape. For example, this side length is the same as this side length. This side length is the same as this side length. And the other side is also the same length on each. Those would be congruent triangles. We haven't changed any of the sizes. In similar triangles, we are allowed to change the size. But we, not, we will not change the angles. So for example, this angle is the same as this angle in both triangles when they're congruent. This angle is the same as this angle, and this angle is the same as this angle. Now, if I resize the second triangle, if I make it bigger or smaller, or I rotate it around, the side lengths might change, but as long as the angles don't change, I will still call the two triangles similar, even though they're no longer congruent. So for example, if I rotate it, well, they're really congruent still because I haven't changed any of the lengths. But what if I then also make this one bigger? Now they're no longer congruent. But when I did the rotation, these angles matched up and the resizing didn't change the angle. Similarly, these matched up and these matched up. And none of the operations I did, the growing the triangle bigger or the rotating it, changed those things. So these triangles are still what we call similar. Same thing happens if I shrink it or even if I rotate it around. So what do we know about triangles that are similar? If the side lengths are not necessarily the same, do we know anything? Well, it turns out we do. For example, suppose I start with the triangle on the left, and let's just say that I, ha I call the sides x, y, and z on that triangle. Well, let's pretend for a minute that z is twice as long as x. So if I take z over x, I'd get 2. If the smaller triangle is similar, then the ratio I get from comparing to the corresponding side lengths will be the same number. So maybe the side lengths of this will call u, v, and w. So if I match up the corresponding sides, x and u match up, z and w match up. If on the big triangle, z was twice as big as x, then the same thing is going to be true on the smaller similar triangle, which means that the fractions you get here, these ratios are the same. And it doesn't have to be twice as big. If it's three times as big or half as big, then you're going to get a certain value when you divide the length of z by the length of x. But as long as the triangles are similar, then doing the corresponding ratio in the other triangle will give you the same result. So let's look at an example. Here we have two triangles. They are named ABC and DEF because those are the names given to their corners, their vertices. So the first triangle has vertices A, B, and C, so we call that triangle ABC. And the other triangle has vertices D, E, F. And we're told that these are similar. In particular, because of the way they're named, we imagine we're going from A to B, then to C. 
And we're told that's similar to the triangle you get if you go from D to E and then F. And so we are supposed to interpret that by saying these two sides correspond to each other. The B value, the B point is in the middle. So this angle would correspond to the middle angle when you draw DEF. So in the middle of drawing DEF, you're here. So we're now saying that those two angles are the same. Similarly, the angle that starts at A is going to be the same as the angle that starts at D. And the angle that starts at C is going to be equal to the angle that starts at F. So the first thing you want to do is try to figure out which angles match up with which angles and which side lengths are supposed to match up with which side lengths. So now there are two missing side lengths on the triangle DEF. Let's call them X and Y. Uh, it doesn't matter which one is which. Well, one thing I know about similar triangles is that if I take a ratio of side lengths on the second triangle, that ratio should be equal to the corresponding ratio on the first triangle. And I can use that fact to figure out what X and Y are. Let's make a ratio that involves X, but not Y, so that I only have one variable. I could take the side length that goes between E and F, that's X, and the side length that goes between D and E, that's 15. And look at that ratio. And then ask, what are the corresponding side lengths in the other triangle? Well, the side between E and F corresponds to the side between B and C, so that's a 16. So this side length, marked by x, corresponds to this side length, which we know is 16. Similarly, from D to E, that side length matches up with the side from A to B, which we know is 10. So we're taking a ratio. This matches up with this, so we put both of those in the numerator. This matches up with this, so we put both of those in the denominator. And because they're similar triangles, we know these ratios are the same value. Now we can use that to figure out what x is. I can isolate x here if I multiply both sides by 15. So I have 16 over 10 multiplied by 15, and that works out to be 24. So let's do the same thing now to figure out y. So y goes between d and f. That corresponds, d to f corresponds with a to c, which we know is 12. And then again, I could use the number 15, I know, for the second triangle between D and E. That side length matches up with A to B, which is 10. These ratios are the same. I can isolate Y. It's 12 over 10 times 15. And that works out to 18. So these are the unknown side lengths, and I can go back and fill those in on my triangle. This side was x, so that's 24, and this side was y, that's 18. 